Here we are in Memphis, Tennessee for a prestigious event in the sport of racquetball. It is the 2007 Choice Hotels U.S. Open Racquetball Championships. Hi everyone, I'm Sean Royster alongside Mike Ceresia, a legend in Canadian racquetball. And we have got a legendary match here, Mike, as the number one and number two players in the world have come here to battle for the U.S. Open title. The thing that makes this match so incredible is that they both have amazing resumes, but neither one has won this event here. That's right. This, you know, this has been a big thorn in Huzak's side. He's wanted this title for the last six years and been knocking on the door. This year he wants to kick through. And Carson, extremely, extremely confident coming into this match. I really look for him to be solid. So let's start with the number one player in the world, Jack Huzak, and who he's had to play to get to rock. Uh, Jack beat Jason Thorner in the quarters in three straight, and then he really put a good hurting on Shane Vanderson in the semis three straight. So he's got to feel great about his game coming to this final. Now Rocky Carson, has he been tested the same way as Jack Huzak has? He has ripped through this draw. He destroyed Andy Hawthorne in the quarters and had a very difficult match in the semifinals with Jason Menino on paper, but he dominated play, controlled the match. He has to feel equally great about himself coming into this final. Well, he's got his big sponsors here, Motorola, Verizon Wireless. Jack Huzak's the number one player in the world. Both players have a lot to prove in this match today. I'm excited about it. The crowd's excited. It's number one versus number two, and it's the finals. We'll be right back for the 2007 Choice Hotels U.S. Open Racquetball Championship. The Choice Hotels U.S. Open Racquetball Championships is brought to you by the Choice Hotels International Family of Hotel Brands with over 5,000 locations and 10 different brands worldwide, offering every type of accommodation in every price range. We meet all your travel needs. For reservations, visit us at choicehotels.com. Choice Hotels, we'll see you there. And by Wilson Art Flooring. If it's tough enough for pro racquetball, it's tough enough for your home. Enjoy the beauty and durability of Wilson Art Flooring, available at fine covering centers everywhere. And by Lucite International, the worldwide leader in crystal clear acrylic. To learn more, visit lucite.com. And by USA Racquetball, your link to the greatest game on earth. To learn more about how racquetball can improve the quality of your life, visit usaracquetball.com for all the details. It was almost 50 years ago when Danny Thomas had a dream. A dream of creating a unique research hospital devoted to curing catastrophic diseases in children. More than just a treatment facility, this would be a research center for children from all parts of the world. St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital has always played a big part in the sport of racquetball. Every year since the U.S. Open began here in Memphis, the players take time out to go over and visit these children. The Choice Hotel's U.S. Open Racquetball Championships has donated now over $100,000 to St. Jude's. This helps in advancing the research and treatment for these brave children. Not only is this great for the kids to meet these professional athletes, but it's also a reminder to the players, and all of us truly, what real strength and courage is all about. I'm down here with Rocky Carson, the number two player in the world, getting ready to play a final against Jack Huzak. Rocky, interesting thing we hear with you and Jack. You guys have both won everything you could win in racquetball, but you both have not won this event. What does this uh, mean to you right now? Uh, you know what, it, right now I'm just focused on playing a match, so uh, the meaning of that is uh, that'll come later. Uh, you know, obviously if it goes good, and uh, uh, my plan is just battle right now. I, I got my game plan for uh, how I want to go, and uh, that's what I'm focused on. Can you give us a couple secrets on what that game plan is, Rock? Yeah, you know, Jack likes to run. I want to watch him run. <laughs> Standing down with Jack Huzak, the number one player in the world, getting ready to play a final here at the U.S. Open. Jack, you have won everything that you can win, but you haven't won the U.S. Open. How are you feeling right now going into this final? I feel great. I felt great all week and I uh, feel like I'm on my game and I'm going to have my hands full with Rocky, but it should be fun. Yeah, you seem like you've been relaxed. There's a little something uh, that we haven't seen out of you before. Just super cool going in there like you're just uh, hanging out playing a, a match at the club. Something different going on this, this week? Yeah, you know, I'm just, I guess I'm not taking it, uh, I'm, I'm not putting as much pressure on myself and I'm just out here having fun and want to enjoy myself. Well, welcome to Memphis, everybody. As you can tell from the crowd, everybody's fired up to see this matchup. Mike, I mean, can you ask for much more in a final in a Grand Slam event? Number one versus number two. I am extremely excited about this match. This is just going to be fantastic. We've got the irresistible force meets the immovable object today. One versus two. They're both playing the best racquetball they've played all year. The top two players in the world. It's going to be a war. You got Rocky Carson up there in the white, playing for Echelon. In the back, the number one player in the world, Jack Huzak in the red, playing for head. 
I didn't mean for that to rhyme, but it did work yeah, out. Yeah, it sure did. Um, another thing that's great about Rocky Carson is, and we've mentioned this in the past broadcast, is uh, that Rocky's got the first sponsor outside of a racquetball company since Marty Hogan with Nike. And, I mean, this is a great thing for Rocky as all the, the big dogs, so to speak, at Motorola and Verizon Rocky Wireless are here to witness Rocky Carson you know, as they just signed him uh, this season, and it's going to be great. Both players have a ton to prove as they have been dominating their entire careers, but the number one tournament, the U.S. Open, neither one of them has a title here. This is it. It's going to be, it's going to be an excellent match. They both want it so bad. Oh, my. Close one. And right off the bat, we might as well talk about some of the rules here. That was a skip ball, and it's very tough to, to watch this game and, and officiate this game. We got J Jason Thorner in the back here trying to uh, do the best he can. We have a sideline judge, Andy Hawthorne. But a skip ball is when it hits the ground. So. And that first shot as a return of serve from, from Jack Huzak, maybe you at home might have thought that was good. But. Um, we're, we're, we're going to do our best to make sure that you guys understand what's going on here because it is a very fast sport. you got to be on your toes. Wow. All tied up, one apiece. Did he call it on himself? He did. He did call it himself. Very uh, rocky, a lot, of, a lot of sportsmanship right there to start it out. It's going to be real interesting to see how these two settle in. They just played a couple of weeks ago in, in Albuquerque, and, uh, and Rocky dominated that match. Oh, my. Jack, is, uh, he's been robbed here. Uh, you know, not robbed, but he's been held off the score sheet for winning the U.S. Open for the last four or five years. He's threatened to win, and who wants this title like there's no tomorrow in Rocky? He's, uh, like you were saying earlier, very comfortable, feeling good about himself, and I expect him to throw it. It's going to be a, a great match today. A great angle by Jack Uzak. Both starting out with lob serves, Sean. Uh, I, I expect them to, Jack, to drive some serves. I expect him to hit some Zs. He'll run the whole gamut today. Oh, man, what an angle. That serve was awesome, I thought. And for Rocky to come in and hit kind of a slice. Yes, he did. To get his racket on, that was perfect. That's exactly what he did. He cut that one, took a little pace off it, and a uh, little change of speed. And Jack was uh, half sex, half, a half step slow. A little antsy uh, on Jack's part taking that overhead. That was uh, uncharacteristic. <laughs> He needed to wait on that ball, move, step back, and hit a regular forehand instead of rushing it. Rocky off to a 2-1 lead now. This is the best in a series of five. They're playing to 11. Oh, rushing the ball a little bit, getting a little too overzealous, Jack Uzak. They're just getting settled in. You know, the first, the first game is definitely a feeling out process. Uh, neither player is going to be too upset losing the first game, but they definitely want to make their mark right now. It's a good call, and that third shot by Rocky Carson was a very good shot. Rocky looks real sharp to start. He's hit, uh, he's hit some variety. Jack's playing at one pace, and when Jack's playing his best, he's moving the ball around and hitting it with a lot of different speeds. Rocky will, will do the same thing, and he's already calm and relaxed out there. Jack definitely is not. Speaking of calm and relaxed, one thing I've noticed on both of these players leading up to this match, going all the way through the draw, both of them just seemed extremely relaxed and cruised all the way to the finals. I mean, yeah, there's been some tight matches and they've been close, but it never seemed to get rattled. No, not at all. And when, they're, when you're moving, it's moving as well as these two players are and, and hitting the ball as solidly, it, there's really no reason to get rattled. They are the top two for a reason. Nice get. Just skipped it. 
That's more uh, traditional Huzak ball. Running, 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 and forcing the error by Carson. One thing that you find very interesting, Sean, when we're watching these matches especially, Jack will hit a, almost a different serve every rally. Every single serve, it'll be something different. He'll give, he'll try and give Rocky 20 different looks. And uh, Rocky, to be honest, is taking us a page out of Jack's book, doing the same thing here. Yeah, most players like to mix it up until they find a weakness and then stick with that serve and attack that weakness. But the problem is, is that both of these players don't have too many weaknesses. They sure don't. This is like Nadal Federer. I mean, this is state-of-the-art racquetball. Oh, wow. Carson is sharp. And he's, the difference right now is center court play. He is really relaxed up front, and he's on top of every ball. Every time Jack has hit a shot in this first game, Rocky has been standing there waiting for it. Rocky really controlling play right now, 7 2. That's going to go out. That was going to be tough, too. Well, maybe. The ball goes out of the court there, and the referee replaces it with a fresh Pro Pin HD ball. Jack Huzak up in the box, 2-7. That's a good get. He's just really hitting the ball hard. There's a setup for Jack. Sean, what a tremendous start for Carson. What a tremendous start. Look at that. And Huzak answers with that. That was a good shot by Huzak. Weak serve on Carson's part. Left that off the side wall. It didn't get to the side wall, and Jack was able to fly kill it. Tough shot by Jack Cusack. I think you're right, Mike. Jack's still kind of feeling it out here. You know, in Jack Cusack history shows in, in this event and some of these Grand Slams, he gets to the finals and kind of turns into a different player. So he's, he's got to really prove it to himself more than anybody. But this is just another match. That's right. There's no question. You can see he's, uh, he's not overreacting, he's not panicking, but he's, uh, he's certainly looking for comfort, trying to find his comfort zone. And he struggled, he struggled at this particular club, this particular venue for four or five years, but he's never played poorly, just not the kind of match you need to make a statement and win the U.S. Open. Right, and he's playing that game style of putting a lot of pressure on his opponents by getting everything because he's so quick and he works hard for every single point, never gives up on a ball, diving all over the place sort of waiting for his opponents to make the mistakes. That's not going to happen today as clearly as we're seeing Rocky Carson. He's not going to make, make too many mistakes. He's no, he's gonna, not. Yeah, he's going to have to be the aggressor if he's going to win this match. There's no question. That's a great angle. 
Wow. Wow. That's a nice touch. That, Huzak plays a ton of squash, and that's when it comes in handy. Cut shots into the corner. Kind of cut that ball in. Most racquetball players hit that ball flat with the racket. That one is a little slice, and usually if you can hit the front wall first, it'll slice into the corner and bounce twice. Kind of catch the crack. Oh, oh look that's at that. Impressive. You know what? From this, from this angle on the court, it looked like Rocky Carson was aimed towards the left corner. Everything about him, his legs, his head, and even his arm, until the very last second, changed his wrist and went down the line with that. Outstanding. And Carson was a uh, deer in the headlights. He, I mean, uh, Huzak was uh, completely stuck, deer in the headlights on that shot. Carson, absolutely playing flawless racquetball so far. Just amazing. He could not have played. He, he could not have played a better first game to this point. He has dominated the number one player in the world and made him look uh, very, very mediocre and average. Now 10-3, first opportunity for Rocky Carson. Game point. Oh, that's a bad ceiling ball. That was a ah, Rocky Carson absolutely goes out there to send a message right off the bat that he came to play today. We'll be right back sure see is. what happens in game two. Listen to this crowd as they are going absolutely crazy, Mike. I mean, why wouldn't you be excited? It's the number one, number two players in the world. Rocky Carson is dominating so far, and they are showing their appreciation as, I mean, they, he took out the number one player with just Rocky Carson fashion. He's been doing it the entire draw, and I mean, what can he ask for in this final? The crowd is loving this. It's, it's, uh, it's excellent out here. I'll tell you what, Carson, Maintaining this level of play is going to be a huge challenge. He played completely a perfect first game. And Huzak, this, he always seems to find a way to win. And, a lot, and done that very successfully against Rocky. I look for a change of pace from Jack. I think that he's going to relax. And it's going to be a tough game. This is a pivotal second game. And Jack Huzak up in the service box here. And starts off with a nice little easy backhand, scores the first point of the second game. Again, this is a series of five. And Rocky Carson leads it one game to zero. Rip the ball. Two, seven, zero. Good start for Huzak. Very important to take the lead. Sean Rackball's an interesting game from that perspective. Taking the lead is critical, and even though it's only a couple of points, it's real nice to be up instead of down to start off this game. Yeah, that's a little bit more of a comfort feeling. There's no question. <laughs> Especially in a Grand Slam final like this, you don't want to play the entire match fighting zero, back. Seven, two. You like to feel that that motivating feeling that you've got the lead. It wears you out, mentally and physically. The one thing that Jack needs to do, he needs to serve better. I mean, for starters, he just, another setup that he served there off the back wall. He needs to start hitting the lob neck a little tighter, and get a better angle. Oh wow, full contact. One, seven, two. It's a good block by Jack Huzak. A good block cost him a point. It was a good block. Right. There's an avoidable hinder that's uh, rarely called, but it's one of those calls. You can explain that. It's a matter of taking away an offensive opportunity. Is that right, Mike? Yes, it is. And what happened there, Jack, was uh, Jack, the ball kind of spun off the side wall, and he didn't expect the ball to go there, and he couldn't get out of the way. And it took away an offensive opportunity from Rocky, and he was going to put that ball down. Loss of point. That's... That's clear forcing right there. Jack Huzak, 
that ball wasn't going to be a winner, even if it went in. He can't force balls from over his head on his backhand or forehand, for that matter. He needs to be patient, stay calm, and start serving better. That's a great get by Rocky Carson. Two pinches in a row. That's old school. Two pinch, the guy goes up, gets the ball in the front left corner, and he went back to the same shot. It'll be interesting to get Cliff's perspective on this match. Played both of these players a lot of times, and in this tournament. Welcome back to Memphis. Well, Mike, we are fortunate to be joined in the booth here by what we know in our sport is the greatest player of all time, six-time world champion, Cliff Swain. Cliff, thanks for hey, joining yes, us. Hal, my pleasure. Good to be here. So, I mean, Jack Huzak being the number one player in the world right now, everybody seemed to think that he was going to come out here and just start off just blowing, it, blowing Rocky out. But look at Rocky Carson just really playing well. What do you, what's your assessment of this match so far? Well, I kind of was one of those guys, too. I thought that... Um, the Jack is going to get it done today. Um, but I think he's got a little monkey on his back with this tournament for some reason. And uh, he, he got it handed to him real good that first game, and it doesn't look real good to me right now either. You know, I wonder if he is just in that mode of just being rattled because of his experience and what's happened to him here. I mean, <laughs> you're part of the reason that he hasn't been successful here as well. Yeah, I'm pretty happy about that too, actually. <laughs> Yeah, Rocky looks extra fresh today. He looks light on his feet. He uh, doesn't look like he's thinking a whole lot. No, um, he's not. Uh, you You're know, right. And uh, it looks like Jack's got a lot up in his kitchen right now. And Rocky, you know, when he came out for the, at the right at the beginning, he ran out. He couldn't wait to get this match started. Yeah. And that was, I don't think it was a put-on. I think he's totally geeked, and he's played, played like he is. Yeah, he is. I agree completely. I'm, I'm definitely surprised and happy. With that being said, Huzak wins this game, or even scores a few points, takes the lead. Mm -hmm. Everything can change. We know how fast it changes in racquetball because of the pace. Yeah, there's no oh, doubt. Jack, Jack, um, Jack, that ball, that ball skipped. There's no question. But once again, Mike, you and I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> That's unusual. Um, for sure, Jack is a big-time fighter. He plays every point. First one and the last one the same. He'll play extremely hard, and either way, this is going to be, it'll be a battle, even if uh, it's three straight, it'll be a battle. Yeah, we sort of expected that out of these two players, number one and number two. And I think it comes down to who has got it all together upstairs, because it's, it's really anybody's game, but it's the mental toughness that really takes it to the next level. Yeah. As we've seen many times in these Grand Slam events, it's people like Jason Manino is a great example. He kind of has a mediocre season, he loses often some of these guys right now, but man, once he gets into these Grand Slam events, all of a sudden this crowd fires him up and he becomes a new man, you know? That's yeah, right. Yeah. Full, full marks to Rocky yesterday for, for really putting a pretty good beating on Jason yesterday. I mean, Jason didn't play his best, but Rocky forced him into a lot of mistakes that he doesn't usually make, especially being the defending champion. Wow, yeah. Rocky totally changed the direction of that ball. It's like he's playing tennis out there, Cliff. He's cutting balls, he's slicing balls, he's hitting them straight in, he's coming over them. He's every single shot that you can think of. Yeah, ball. I've never seen it before. He swings as hard as anybody, and sometimes it goes in at about 50 miles an hour. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how he does it. But he's moving really well. He's covering the court well without diving, so he looks extra fresh right now, too. Sorry. Gonna replay that. So you retired recently. Now I guess the best question is, what have you been doing, Cliff? Uh, going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I've been golfing a lot, and uh, actually Four, watching seven, this four. is a little bit more difficult than I thought it was gonna be. I thought I'd just come, enjoy watching, and I don't know, make my skin crawl. I kind of want to yeah. hop in there, you know? I can imagine. Yeah. If I do, I'd like to. I'd like to have Mike Cerisi as my first match, though. <laughs> so confidence booster, you know? You don't want to start out with another <laughs> loss. Come on. <laughs> Plus, the good news is that feeling your feeling goes away. It does. It doesn't last. All right. It, it will go away. It takes about four years. It'll okay. go away. 
because I'm not sleeping that well. <laughs> I, per I personally think that um, that the tour should go back to two serves. You're right, Cliff. I do. It's, it's, it's right. becoming like squash, you know, and squash is a great game, but this isn't squash. You know, people like to see the ball hit hard. They like to dive. It makes you play a more athletic game style. It's much more exciting. And there's no harm in doing it if it doesn't work out for some reason. Um, you can always go back to one serve. But with these rackets, and as good as the athletes are now, um, I don't think you'd see people getting aced off the court like you did before, you know? Uh, with, the, with the equipment change and the ball's a little bit slower. Um, I, I really think racquetball needs it. And I agree, 100%. I mean, the pace, the pace of the rallies has not changed. Mm -hmm. But the pace to start out the rallies mm -hmm. Is it's just it's, it's just boring, kind of right? boring. Yeah, it is. You know? yeah. It's not it's not like okay, here comes the heater. Which side is he going right or left? And you know, and the guy's going to hit a lob serve nine times out of ten. The crowd knows what serve he's going to hit before he even hits it, and yeah. so does the player. Yeah. Okay, here comes the lob to the right. Yeah, it's. Um, I think it's time for a change on that, and then maybe I'll come back. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow, Rocky Carson, great shot. And then you'd have a nice mixture of some people. Oh, sure. Jack would still hit lob serves, and maybe Rocky would hit more drive serves. Yes. Just a little bit more variety, a little bit more excitement. Just the idea of being able to go step into the box and go for that serve that's two inches over the short line. Yeah. That's what's missing from the game right now. People love watching that. Oh yeah, they, they love it. Absolutely. They want to hear. They want to see the bombs. Yeah. And all the tennis, Me too. tennis fans yeah. that are watching the tennis channel, you know, everybody gets excited about a serve that's going 120, 130 five, in tennis. Seven, mm -hmm. People don't realize in racquetball that the ball's going much faster. And that's what's so exciting about our sport. So, yeah, I agree with both of you. Yeah, I think, you know, just from what I've heard from people, they, you know, they like watching Sudsy and Kane and uh, yourself. Just, <laughs> just, just bringing the heat, you know? Right, wow. absolutely. That's a tough call right there. That's a real tough call. Yeah, that's. Um, that's a, that's a referee wanting to be too too much a part of this match, in my opinion. I was over the line, I stepped on it. Over the line. With my foot? This line or that one? No, your shoulder. Oh, my shoulder. Wow. This, hey, was it this one? Wow. 6 5. Hey, Jack. Huzak. Jack. Huzak. Get involved. Get out. Yeah. <laughs> He's just teasing, teasing uh, Rocky a little bit, saying, oh, look at Rocky line. teasing back and making fun of Jack now. <laughs> <laughs> thing about these two guys they if we're looking for people people that don't like each other that's not <laughs> it these guys like each other they're buddies and, uh, yeah, but uh, you know Cliff you can you know this one of the worst things to lose to one of the worst situations to lose to your buddy because then you got to put up with them you know you lose to the enemy and you don't see the guy for, until the next tournament you lose to your buddy you have to see him every day. Oh, that's torture. It is. That's bad. Like losing to a roommate, even worse. Yes. You see him getting ready for the match the next day. Yes. Just want to hit him with the racket. Yes. <laughs> that's not nice. Come on. No. <laughs> now, uh, Rocky, looking at the side line judge, Andy, Andy Hawthorne, this mm -hmm. is something that's brand new to, the, to our game, is this side line judge. I mean, I think we all agree that racquetball has been the only sport that has just one set of eyes. Appreciating. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what do you think? It's a good shot by Rocky. What do you think about this sideline judge and getting him involved in the uh, tournament play? I think it should, he should have been there a long time ago. It's, um, especially when there's a glass side wall like this. The it's more the better. Sense. Yeah, the less, the less for the chair umpire, or whatever you like to call him, has to do the better. You know, it's, um, and as far as that dotted line, the, that encroachment rule, I think that should go too. It's um, it's it's too tough to call. It's a, it's a safety it's a safety rule for amateurs, not for professionals. We don't need that safety rule. But Cliff, mean, the, the, the problem there, sorry, Sean, the, the problem there is that you, we do need some kind of line to determine where you, you cannot step over. And then it becomes if it's not the, the dotted line, then it could become the service line. And well, so we're going to still be in the same situation. Well, this is my idea on that. Um, the line should stay. It just should be. You can go in whenever you. If you hit the ball inside that line, it just has to be short hopped. Ah. You see what I'm saying? Yes. You know what? You can't hit it out of the air. That'd be perfect. Yeah. That, that, that's a, that, that, makes, that makes sense. Yeah. Great angle by Huzak. 
Oh, wow, that just flat rolled up the side wall. He was there, though. Carson was on that and, and he caught the crack. Back in the encroachment clip, are you saying when you're returning serve that you don't have your opponent's safety in mind? <laughs> that is shocking. No, it really doesn't cross my mind that much. That's... That might be in friends afterwards. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> that's very surprising. <laughs> Six hundred seven. Tight one here. Six seven. Yeah, this is an important game right here. This is it for sure. Carson knows that he wants this one. He wants to get up two zero, and yeah. Huzak, he, he's hating it. He doesn't even want to think about being down too low. Look out! Oh wow! Oh, that's oh. Uh, not a good serve either. Rocky should have done a lot more with that one. Yeah. And uh, this is this is where I think Jack's especially good. You know, he's uh, definitely good uh, later in the games, later in the tournaments. Um, doesn't seem to get nervous. He, he plays the, the important points well. So this is a big test for Rocky. Right? He plays he plays very similar to Mike Yellen, where Mike Yellen was an all-time pro, uh, five-time uh, world champion in the '80s. Uh, really dismantled the Marty Hogan empire, and he uh, he played the same at 1-1 as mm -hmm. he did at. 10-9 in the tiebreaker, mm. and uh, a lot of guys change their game. A lot of guys will be yeah. more cautious when it's late than mm -hmm. in, the, in the match. Not Hugh Zach. No, he's very good at this, so. He cut that one, left it off the bat. Wow. If you cut that ceiling ball on the forehand side, you're, it's gonna be very difficult to not yeah, keep it off the back, keep wall. It off the back yeah. wall, correct. Nine, seven, seven. I think this is a good time too for um, Rocky to go to the forehand a little bit more. I, I, I played, I mixed it up with Jack a lot, but um, his forehand is not as good, and I, I found it would break down a little bit more, a little bit more on the big Smiths. And right now, it's the opposite. Yeah, Carson's forehand is broken down. Yep, it has. So now Jack with his first opportunity to win a game here, 10-7. And that's what's so cool about racquetball, the momentum changes on a dime. You know, you don't see that in tennis. Oh, that's a great shot. Good Rocky's shot. He's got that left corner down. I mean, it's like old people when he's, when he's down and he needs something, he always seems to go to that left corner. I hated that serve. I hated it. He just scored three <laughs> points in a row going forehand. I don't know why he went away. And then he hit a back, a back wall, easy setup off the back wall, and Rocky just buried him in the left corner. Oh, that's it's nasty. That was not a bad serve, and that's one thing that Jackson improved. And I think the squash has helped him there, taking the ball out of the air. Even mm -hmm. if, if it hits the side wall or doesn't hit the side wall, he can just tear those up. Yeah, he's very good at that. Yeah, Rocky needs to win this game. Oh, oh my gosh. Yes. That's just, uh, that is mentally blocking out. That's just checking out. That is unbelievable. I'm not sure why he would take a shot like that. Rocky's probably going to go outside and take that one over as well. We're going to take a break ourselves here. Cliff Twain, thanks for joining us here. One game apiece. We'll be right back for game three. We're getting exactly what we expected. Both players have been nicked up, little cuts, little nick, and now it's going to, we're going to find out who's going to lock in and get the third game. The first two games are fantastic. Both players have been playing very well. Uh, to be quite honest, Jack, Jack was a little sluggish in the first game and uh, and turned it around. He was seven five down in the second, came back and oh, wow. and really started returning serve better, and his confidence is back. I think it's going to be a great third game. Biggest question now is what what will Rocky serve? You know, what is he going to? I think he's going to need to change the pace a little bit. Well, there's nothing worse on the mental psyche of a player when everything you're serving, your opponent's got an answer for, 
And it started to turn into that in the second game as Jack just had an answer for every single thing. You, you talk about how Rocky was mixing up his serves and you mix them up until you find a weakness. But I mean, every single thing that Rocky brought to Jack, he had an answer for. Yes. Zero, zero. Warming up the new ball, Sean. Racquetballs, uh, when they're brand new, they're a little slick. Hit, a few, hit, hit it a few times, slice a little bit on the strings, and then the ball's uh, ready for action. That ball was too deep. Good return by Carson. The ball was too deep. Got behind Jack, and he couldn't hit that ball side front. Uh, here's the chance we'll find out what Rocky serves here. Ooh. Call the replay. Jack looking for a more hitter. Jack kind of kind of jumped on that one. If he would have actually taken his time and set himself instead of running into Rocky, I think he would have got the avoidable there. But because he wasn't in position to swing, our official decided not to give him an avoidable, and rightfully so. That's a good get. Look at Rocky cutting those off. Oh no. Oh, oh no. That's what you were talking about. Ooh. Just by setting his feet, he gets that call. And I don't think that was an avoidable hitter. No. I thought Rocky was out of the way. Yeah. And listen to the crowd making Jason Thorne pay for that call. I mean, the bottom line, let's define what the avoidable hitter is. If a person is set up and it takes away an offensive shot, then it's an avoidable hitter. Goes against the player who's in the way. However, Jack set his feet looking for the avoidable hitter because he didn't take a swing and Rocky was out of the way. He, he was. Wasn't, he was not in his way to hinder him from taking that shot. He certainly cleared. It was, uh, I'd ask you to explain that one, but I think you already know. Yeah, he was out of the way no and everybody's opinion except for the official. And Jack. And, and Jack. <laughs> That's a one. Zero, seven, zero. What? Zero, seven, zero. Who got the warning now? I don't know. Once again, what, what's a warning? I'm not sure. There's no need for a warning. It's either good or bad. Yeah, that was a good call. Jack didn't see that shot. Zero, seven, zero. Now the ball before on the avoidable hinder, the reason that Jack held and didn't swing, he's not trying to get a free point there. He thought Rocky was closer than he was. That's why he didn't swing. He didn't want to smash him in the face with a racket. And uh, he did get the call. But he wasn't trying to get the call. He was actually being careful in that in that manner, in that instance. You 100% on that, Mike. I feel pretty confident about it. I mean, it, it was a fly kill situation with Rocky on the deck behind him, and, it, and it's not a difficult shot. You know, and the only reason why I would question you on that, Mike, is just granted they're friends and safety matters. But at this level, this capacity crowd, this what this means to Jack Huzak, I don't think. He's going to be thinking about the safety of Rocky. It's not so much the safety. I think it's more the situation where you're just going to say, I'm not, I'm not going to take that shot in this case because he thought he was still right there. And he, and, and he figured, OK, I'm not going to take it. I'll probably get the call. But it, he's not holding his racket, hoping for the call. Because you're right, the ref, it's his job not to let a guy just hold his racket up and give him a winner. Sure. I mean, this is men's pro racquetball, and you should have to play the ball unless there's no other chance. And in that instance, I didn't think there was any other way. Now Rocky gets the first two points now of game three. I thought Cliff, uh, Cliff made a great point about uh, Jack's backhand that you know, might be a good move on Rocky's part to start attacking that forehand. Yes. But he's been serving the backhand with regularity uh, to start out this game, hitting that Z and hitting a straight lob. Good get. <laughs> Rocky's giving us a facetious uh, hold up there. We're going to take a little break here. 
2-0. Both players have a game in this series. We'll be right back for more game three. Welcome back to Memphis. Jack Huzak in the red, number one player in the world. Serving to Rocky Carson, the number two player in the world. With a high lob to the forehand of Rocky. And a nice smooth stroke. And Barry's out in the right corner. Jack's just picking at that scab in the back right corner. It just feels like that's, that forehand will break down. And it didn't at the end of game two. But for the most part, Rocky hit it very well out of that corner. Oh, wow. Shot. Nice shot by Jack Cusack. Cusack is rock solid in center court. He just plants his feet and makes the adjustment to his body. And on that shot, that ball was not an easy shot, kind of right into his body. And he just pulled his left shoulder out of the way and buried it in the right corner. That's tough. Huzak very upset with himself. He's hit about three or four serves already this game off the back wall, and that just drives a guy like that crazy. He'll spend hours on end back in Michigan practicing his serves, and to, to step up and hit bad serves, unnecessary. And uncalled for. Boom. Just missed that one. He really didn't have to do that there. You know, he had, I thought he had room to flip a ceiling ball or maybe go three walls, but he tried to go four walls. Three, seven, zero. Didn't get it back. Yeah. Huzak again, looking antsy. Looks like he did at the beginning of, uh, of game one. Three, zero. Rocky with this half Z. Oh, yeah. These guys are making the court very small, very, very small, Sean. I mean, he he had to bury that ball. If you can, you can see where Rock is cleaning up the perspiration. It's in front of the front Zero, line. Yeah, very seldom does a player get above that front line there. But that just goes to show you, you gotta, I mean, everything's gotta be perfect at this level. Oh. oh, Jack decided to make the call there. Two bounces is what his call was. <laughs> I get that. <laughs> and Carson's making it clear to Jack that he probably won't let him have the last word in on anything he says. Was it a hinder? He's still harping on that hinder thing. Sometimes Rocky plays, I think Rocky talks to get himself feeling comfortable. And uh, we saw in the semifinal match with Jason Menino, he talked a lot in game three and completely clocked out in that game. Did a lot less talking in game four and uh, eased through the match. Yeah, when Rocky lets his racket do the talking, it's much more beneficial to his game style. People like Jason Menino um, and these guys, uh, Kane, for instance. Yep. So these, are, these are guys get motivated by talking. A little chit-chat. That's off the back. Good guess. Oh, that's, that's just not necessary. You know what? That, this looks like a replay of the start of the first game. You know, that, that type of a shot, very uncharacteristic for Huzak. He doesn't need to hit that shot. That ball's a setup off the back wall. Easy setup off the back wall. Yeah, it's so easy to see at this point with Jack Huzak when he's completely dialed in and when he's a little scattered up in his head. The, the temperature in the court and in the building will affect the pace of the ball. And that's why the ball is faster this year than in past years. This court in the past has played medium to medium slow, maybe even more slow than that. And, and this year, it's at least medium pace. Oh, 
have Jack, to check the replay on that yeah. one. I thought I thought the ball. I thought he skipped the ball. I did too. But I mean, I guess we'll have to look at that replay. Jack, Jack clearly felt like he hit Rocky with the ball there, and very upset. I mean, very seldom do you see him get that animated. Never. job in the building and he does such a great job. That rally was absolutely outdoor-esque for Rocky Carson. I mean, he was up there by the service box cutting off ceiling balls. He was cutting off everything up there. And again, you know, we, we constantly talk about Rocky being this outdoor rack and roll champion. You know, that, that has really helped his game to make him somebody that He's got a different weapon. He's got a weapon oh, no, that not a lot of players have out there. That's right. It, what, it, what it does is it lets him cut balls off in center court and feel very comfortable about it. So whether the ball's at his ankles, waist, chest, and he can hit very effective shots from center court without the need to wait for it to come off the back wall all the time. Yeah, just in case you don't know what we're talking about. There is no back wall in outdoor. So Rocky's playing in the beach cities all over the world right now at World Outdoor Racquetball. And he basically goes and there's three big cement walls and there's no back wall. So you're forced to step up and cut all these balls off because if you let something pass it was, and it stays in, it's over. Another bad serve by Huzak. He got away with it, but another bad serve. He's, you know what? He still hasn't found an effective serve. And usually he has 20 effective serves. Cannot stress enough how important the third game is. Going into game four with a 2-1 lead is absolutely more motivating and better on a player you don't want to go in there with trailing 2-1. No thanks. That's a good shot. Great angle by Jack Huzak. Good sequence there by Huzak. He, he touched the left, the last one in the left corner, backhand, re-kill, and that one, same exact situation, and he punched it cross court and uh, kind of caught Rocky flat-footed. The Choice Hotels U.S. Open Racquetball Championships is brought to you by the Choice Hotels International Family of Hotel Brands with over 5,000 locations and 10 different brands worldwide, offering every type of accommodation in every price range. We meet all your travel needs. For reservations, visit us at choicehotels.com. Choice Hotels, we'll see you there. And by Wilson Art Flooring. If it's tough enough for pro racquetball, it's tough enough for your home. Enjoy the beauty and durability of Wilson Art Flooring, available at fine covering centers everywhere. And by Lucite International, the worldwide leader in crystal clear acrylic. To learn more, visit lucite.com. And by USA Racquetball, your link to the greatest game on earth. To learn more about how racquetball can improve the quality of your life, visit usaracquetball.com for all the details. 4-4 four, four in the third. Huzak lining up for a lob serve to the backhand of Rocky Carson. Good call. Four seven four. Jack was all, all over that pinch, and the line was right open for Rocky. Tough to know that though when your opponent's behind you. That's for sure. That's a better lob nick there by Jack, forcing Huzak to the ceiling, and then he kills the next one. That is what he's designing at home. It's okay. Good, perfect lob, force him to hit a shoulder high shot or a ceiling ball, and then I'm going to bury the third one. That's the design, and it hasn't happened very often this match. Sticks with the same serve. That's a good shot. That's a good shot. Rocky wanted an avoidable hinder there, and kind of half held up his, his swing, and it was not an avoidable. I mean, you know what? 
you, if you step up to cut that that's off. That's right. You step up to cut a shot, a shot like that, you do have to understand that both players are monopolizing the same court area, and you can't always just hit your shot and disappear. Finally a drive Yeah, serve. I like that. I like that serve. Oh, he missed an easy set of attack, skipped it in. Rocky missed a dead duck forehand set up there, and then Jack equally gave him the gift back, couldn't stand prosperity and skipped the next one. Let's see if he does that again. I, I think that's one of those every eight or ten serves he's going to probably try to sneak into the forehand. Oh, that's a good angle. No. Oh, wow. I disagree. I thought it was good. Makes it all right. I thought it skipped before the sidewall, okay. and Jack thought it. Jack is on my in, in my camp on that particular call. It was a tight one. I mean, it was very close. Good footwork there by Carson, though, to step over. I mean, that ball was tough in the right corner. Most guys will try and hit the, hit a forehand off of that ball. He spun around and hit a backhand in the left corner. Yeah, just missed that. that. Good sequence here for Carson. Three points in a row. Huzak trying to calm himself down. Let's get straight down the line. And oh, got it. Get. Unbelievable. Good angle there by Huzak. That's a hinder. Wow! And he pumps his fist, Rocky, and looks straight in Jason Thorner for not getting the call. And one of the great things about a, about a player is when he doesn't get the call that he wants, or he puts up a, his hand for a hinder, is to continue playing, because you're not always going to get the call. That's for sure. And he did. He played right through there. And, and other rallies, he slowed down and stopped. And. Uh, and actually lost rallies because of that. That time he played right through and hit a fantastic shot to finish the rally. Huzak needs to answer. Needs a solid return here. Oh. That weak, a weak a, serve. That's Very it. weak. That serve, Sean, has to go back wall, side wall. It has to go front, hit the front wall, bounce on the floor, and hit the back wall before the side wall. And if it goes side wall, back wall, that's what these players practice all day long. They'll never miss those, and or you, very rarely. And you saw Rocky with his finger there at the end. He was pointing at the corner and doing that very thing, trying to explain to himself that's what he wanted it to happen. That's right. He's doing a little zen. Next time, corner, you, me, let's right. work. <laughs> right. Look at these misses right now from Jack Huzak. The one thing about Jack, when he starts missing, I don't know if you can pick it up at home, but he'll shorten up his swing a little bit, especially on his backhand. It's almost like he, a, a hit, and then he pulls his racket back instead of following all the way through. And Carson is one of the longest swingers on tour. He, there is no hold up in his swing, always accelerating through the ball. You think Tiger Woods hitting a, hitting a tee shot with a driver. And that, see that ball he got all the way through? Watch this one. That same thing, all the way through that one. Jack's going to go think this one over. Rocky Carson with a commanding lead now in game three. That's it. 9-5 now. Rocky Carson up in game three. We'll be right back. 9-5. Rocky Carson trying to go up two games to one. Have a huge advantage going into game four. There's a setup for Jack. Rocky's there. Carson won't let the hinder thing go. Still teasing. Doesn't work on that one. He got pinned to the left wall there. He got stuck. He made a great get up in the front left corner and uh, couldn't get out of the way and uh, had to retreat. And Jack had the whole wide open court and just flipped across court for a winner. Jack stick with that high lob. It's going to be a left corner. I mean, 
Yeah, a little off balance. That one spun a little bit more. The one thing about this court is that there's, there's a few hollow spots out there, and the ball bounces around. Sometimes you'll get a bounce that you did, didn't expect, and that one was clearly one of those things with Jack. Jack expected the ball to be about six inches to his right, and all of a sudden it was a foot away, and he couldn't reach it. Rocky sticks with that Z. Yeah, again. And what Jack is doing there, why he's missing those, Sean, is that he's leaning forward with his momentum. He's already moved the, the right side of his body forward and gotten in front of those balls, and subsequently has nothing on his back foot to hit that shot with. And to hit that ball solidly, you've got to keep most of your weight on your back foot to start, and he's not doing that. Rocky with game point, 10-5. And that time and he did. That's a good shot, yeah. That's a good observation, Mike. I wasn't even looking at that. It just, to me, I'm just thinking about the mental of Jack Huzak right now. And um, from a technical standpoint, watching him on that, you are absolutely right. Good serve. See how he handles this. Went to the body. Got to kill this one. Yikes. Good angle. Wow. hitting all the shots, that's all the answers right now, and, does, and he deserves this 10-5 lead. Now I look over here at Dan Adderholm, an executive at Motorola, and some of the people at Verizon Wireless, and man, they are so behind their player, Rocky Carson. It's exciting to see two huge companies like this involved in our sport, Mike. It's, it's fantastic, it's what we've been looking for, and we deserve, quite honestly. That's a great shot. Set that one up real well. He's, he's hit a lot of balls straight down, the, or a lot of balls in the left corner off that Five shot, zero, and a lot cross court. Not that many down the line. So as soon as he went down the line, Rocky was kind of lean a little bit right. Boom, gone. Missed opportunity there because it's nice if you the first time you get game point to close it out. You heard a grunt come out of Jack as he took a swing there. Yep. Yeah, There's another opportunity for Rocky Carson. Hey, you don't want this thing to linger. Carson was very close to getting that ball. He was tracking, he knew it was going straight in, and he was on it. Just too good a shot by Jack. Rocky having a little bit of trouble scoring this last point. Jack Huzak in the service box, sticks with this lob to the backhand of Rocky. This will go to the ceiling. It's a good one too. Five, seven, ten. Good ceiling balls by both players there. Kind of the forgotten aspect of the game. Oh, that's tough. Five. Wow. We were talking about Curtis's ability to fly kill balls. Well, Cusack sure. just showed us his, his there. And I think cross training is a is a huge thing in any sport. And I think that cross training in other sports rather than your own obviously helps you in certain areas. And we talked about Rocky with playing the same sport of racquetball, but outdoors being an entirely different game. Well, you've mentioned many times, Mike, about um, Jack playing so much squash, and you see so many elements of that in his game style. Patience is the biggest one. You know, we talked about that earlier in the week, and patience is the biggest one, and that's why you're seeing him right now, even though he was down 10-5, kind of settling in and not panicking. Nice get. That's a get and a half. There's a good shot. Very cool. Cusack thought it was two. It was real close. And I'll tell you what, when you, when you look at, a, at the ref and you tell him that's terrible, you're pretty convinced that it was two bounces. Like, you really believe in your mind that it was. Sure. Normally, you might give him a, a glance or a stare or something, but when you say that's terrible, you feel it.
this sideline judge Andy Hawthorne hasn't been too involved in this match so far. This is a testament to Jason Thorner doing a great job. Absolutely. We're getting to the critical points here. Man, good get. Fantastic shot by Carson, and you could just see him just kind of give it the fist pump and say, finish! Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's got to finish here. I mean, how many opportunities? We're, we're near five, I think. Was 10-5, now it's 10-8. He, he wants to close it now. He doesn't want Jack back in that box. Good angle. Oh, good, great get. Touch it. Uh oh now Carson's going to have to... Oh, replay. At the bottom of my shoe. You lifted it up, replay. He said it hit the bottom of his shoe, but yeah. I'm guessing even with the sole of the shoe, that probably hurt. Oh, yeah, I think that had a little pizza. Man, he ripped that ball. Yeah. That was outrageous. And he was going no, cross court. Uh, what, what Rocky did there, he did it earlier in the match on one of the short hops. He set up with his left foot open, totally open to the left corner, given the impression that he was going to take the ball down the line, meaning down the left line or in the left corner, and he opened his body at the last minute and, and tried to gun it cross court, wide angle by Jack, and just caught him in the foot. Good idea, but in that situation, I'd like to see him go bottom board and end it, instead of trying to get cute. Oh, my. And the game ends off of a mistake of Jack yeah. Huzak. I mean, Robbie just really, really got fortunate there because you know Jack did a great job not giving that up, and not giving that away to Robbie. He fought his way back, but then at the end, skipped that last shot. Yeah, yeah. an easy one, an easy one. He's gonna have to regroup. Well, nevertheless, Rocky Carson goes into Game Four with a 2-1 lead. We'll be right back for more racquetball on the Tennis Channel. Zero, serving zero. Here we are back in Memphis at the Choice Hotel's U.S. Open. Jack Huzak sticks with a, a lob serve to the backhand of Rocky. Seemed like Rocky was stretching his back. Yeah. One, still zero. Wow. Jack just went ahead and served. Didn't know if he was quite prepared for that. Jack uh, might have got away with that first point. Sticking with the lob next to the backhand. Oh. I'll tell you what, Carson gets that ball very well on the back left corner. He holds his racket over further with his knuckle more on top than most players and gives him the ability to hit the ball flatter when the ball's in front of him and beside him. That's the shot Jack was looking for at 10-8. It was the exact same serve, exact same return. That time he buried it, last time he skipped it. Still a hell of a shot to try and make it at 8-10. I'd prefer to see a ball go down the line in the clutch. Again, left corner. A little practice time for uh, Rocky. Here, Rocky, listen, I'm gonna lay it out for you just off the back wall about three feet and you bury it in the left corner. I, I, don't, I think you can do it two or three times in a row. You know, and Jack's right there. You talk about anticipating. Jack is right there to cover that, and you have to hit it perfect. And Rocky's doing just that. Good off-speed. Good off-speed back in there by Rocky. He didn't, he didn't reach back and blast that one in the corner. He just put it in the corner. One, sorry, one. Put it. He did like put it. Put it in the corner. One serving one. Oh. That was very close to being three walls. There. Sure was. 
And, and Jack kind of got a break because when the ball hits directly One, in the corner, one. sometimes the ball will jump right back at you, come straight out, and that's what happened there, and Rocky got jammed. Kind of a, wasn't very, a real good return, but good enough. Another crack for her, for Rocky. Three points! Let's go! Take advantage of it! One, seven, one. Good Jack, now starting to scream at himself. Again, very seldom do you hear Jack scream and yell. He wants this so bad, so bad. He won't be able to sleep for a month if he loses this match. What an angle. Oh, another crack. Yep. He's had a lot of cracks, but I'll tell you right now, Huzak, Huzak wants this. He's going to do everything in his power to get back in this third game, in this fourth game, and, and pull this one out. You look for him to go through a wide range of emotions in this game. There's going to be no laying down. Jack gets jammed there. Three, Boy, huzak has got to dig deep to stay in this one right now because Rocky's on fire. Totally relaxed, in control. He's got that look on his face and his body language is the same as we've seen in this entire tournament. And Huzak's really got to find it here if he's going to stay in this one. Sure does. His time getting up there. It did. You know what? That was a very uh, odd. He, uh, I mean, he had plenty of time to get up and be, get down and get back up, and he kind of just uh, looked like I, w I don't want to say he hurt himself, but right, guys, just, uh, just kind of laid there. It was, odd. it was strange. Leisurely got up yes. there, like his alarm clock went off. Yeah, and he was out of bed. That's right. Good angle. Good angle. V, a V pass there. Oftentimes Jack will hit a pass that'll hit, hit the front wall, then the side wall on the fly. And Rocky's proven that he can run those down. That time he rolled it cross court. That was strictly power that won that rally for Rocky. But that was, I mean, Jack was right there. Could have got his racket on it, but he just blew it past him. Absolutely. You know, to be quite honest, we're in the game four. It's 3-2. Jack has not played the kind of match that I know he was hoping for. And Rocky definitely has. Good shot. That was just an inch away from catching that side wall. Sure was. Carson's hit just an amazing amount of cracks, most of them on the left side. And I think the difference right now between the two players, Carson seems to be letting the ball drop a little lower when he's hitting his shots, especially the shots off the back wall. And Jack's taking him a little earlier, staying up just a little bit more than the Rockies. Got that. What a get. There's, there's, there's the shot that Rocky's been hitting. You know, a little half cut down the line, open court. Great get by Carson up the front right three, corner, three, too. Three. Incredible. Rocky's all over the court, all tied up at three apiece. He said it was good. Thank you. 3-7-3. Looks like Jack is not going to stray from that lob nick to the backhand of Rocky. If it comes off the back wall, it'll be more than likely a left corner rollout. Oh, right down the line. It's a 
good ceiling wall. Yeah. Wasn't a perfect ceiling wall. No, it was good. It was good, but Jack right now totally can't believe that he, I mean, he almost whiffed on that. He's out of sync. It's 3-3 in the fourth, but he's still out of sync. It is. You know, like the... Four, seven, three. I don't know what I was going to say there. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I wanted to say. I wanted to say it looks like the Grand Canyon over there. Just never do you see this many cracks. It's, it's that sidewall and the floor at the same time. Oh, oh man. Great He's acts clearly disheartened right now. Five, clearly. Seven, three. And you know what? Rocky's had the answers and the serve. He's just really used about two or three serves and mainly the drive Z to the backhand's been the one. Another skip ball. And Jack takes a swing at that one in the backcourt. Very frustrated, rightfully so. Rocky up to a 6-3 lead now in game four. Five points away from a championship. A lot of rack ball left to be played though. You Cannot count Jack Huzak out of this match quite yet. Oh, what is he doing in that corner? Those are, those are good serves, but what is he doing? Yeah, they're good serves, but not good enough to make shots like that. No. He's completely missing the ball. It's like he's never seen a Z serve all of a sudden. Rocky off to a commanding lead now, 7-3 in game four. Starting to look like Rocky's gonna take over here. We're gonna find out if he takes this match when we get back from the break. All right, we're getting close to the end of the match. The crowd's getting antsy, Mike. Game four and Rocky Carson really dominating so far against the number one player in the world. Sorts. Just all the way through that timeout, talking to himself, trying to convince himself to get back in this match any way he can. Really, really big right, for both players right now to four, stay in this seven, match. The crowd's starting to make some noise. Seven, Jack Huzak especially has to get locked in here. 7-3, Rocky Carson. Desperately needs some good serve returns off that backhand drive serve. Late leaves that up. Man. Yep. We are officially in the danger zone for, uh, for Jack Huzak. He looks shell shocked. He can't find an answer to that Z. At this point, he'd be better off maybe even hitting a ceiling ball. You know, anything to give to give a different look back to Carson. Going with the replay there, but man, I gotta give some props to Jack Huzak with the athletic move there. He slipped and fell, but was able to get out of the way. <laughs> it was incredible. He totally blew a tire and uh, jumped back up and got in the rally. Sean, something to look for right now. We're at, we're, you know, we're in a zone where Carson can clearly feel the opportunity to win his first U.S. Open. It'll be interesting to see how he handles it, if he overswings on balls or if he stays calm. This is what all your mental training, you do all that thought, and imagery, and everything else that you work on, and we'll see if it pays off for him, if he can stay calm. Yes. Clear, clearly overswung on that backhand. Sure. Dead duck and uh, ripped it off the back wall and Jack just calmly stepped over and rolled it out. You know, it's almost even a tough position for Rocky to be in right now because it's it's tough to be at this point where you start to smell it and you start to visualize kissing the trophy. That's and, right. There's I mean, pressure that's, on both players. Oh, yeah. 
Pressure on Rocky to close it out. Pressure on Jack to find a way to get in the game. No, two bounces. Nice tap on the back there. Proof again that these guys. Oh no. no, that's a terrible call. I was behind him. The ball was down in the service box, and I was here. Oh, that's where the second bounce was. Play. He still almost got the ball. I don't care if we still almost had nothing. Okay, three, seven, okay. I have to agree with Huzak on that one. That was, I, I didn't like the call. I, I thought agree. it was two bounces, and uh, I thought he hit a good winner, and especially upsetting because you worked very hard in that rally to win the point. Yeah, that's, that's not, that wasn't a hinder, I didn't think. There's a good what? shot. You know, I gotta give Jack credit. After that bad call, immediately he locked it back in. He let it, he made his point, and then he let it go. Absolutely, and, and that's what you need goal. to do. You can't, you can't sit there and let it affect your next point. You got to be a, a veteran, and you got to be mature about it out there. Great get, but that was a great yeah. shot by Rocky. I mean, we're so used to any time that lob sort of comes off sidewall, backwall setup. We're so used to seeing 99% of those shots being in the left corner, and then that extra 1% would maybe be a down the line on the left side. But for him to take that ball and go completely cross court wide angle right there, that was very impressive. Sure was. And to be quite honest with you, I'm surprised Jack went away from the Z serve. You know, one thing in racquetball is always cool. Somebody's doing something to you with a particular serve or a return or a shot, you go back and do the same thing to them just to see what their response is going to be. And he had an easy point the time before off with the using the drive Z that Rocky's been using, and then he went away from it. Rocky looks like he's going to stick with that Z. That's not an avoidable hinder. You know what, and that's a play there that, you know, Jack's clearly out of sync because that ball, he normally would just smash that right down the line. I think he saw enough of it or take it off the back wall for a setup. Instead of just asking sure. for a mediocre, mediocre hinder, the ball was coming eight miles an hour down the middle of the court. Nope. Yeah, I'm with you, Mike. But clearly it didn't. There was no argument on either player's part. Certainly not in Rocky's perspective, but uh, Jack didn't say a word. Huzak clearly needs to roll the serve return out. I mean, he needs to serve back, and he needs to get back in this match. Look at that hesitation. rope Wow. Oh, my goodness. And look at this. Big moment here for Rocky Carson. People chanting Huzak in the in the crowd, trying to fire him up. But here it is, Rocky Carson for the match. And Good Jack. shot. He answers. Wow, digs deep. Here's the upside for Jack. Now Rocky needs two points. Unfortunately, Jack needs eight. Rocky still needs to get two in a row, and that's that's the only thing that Jack can hold on to right now. Sticking with the lob. Ooh. Ooh. Hello. Unbelievable Hello. shot. Hello. Two great backhands by Huzak back to back. That is as flat of a rollout as you're going to see. That was amazing. You're going to see him go for every shot. There's, he's not going to hold up. He's got nothing to lose at this point. Wow, this shot. A great shot. Great shot. By and that's the same thing that, that Jack hasn't been able to do. Rocky just answered that drive Z to the back end straight down the line. And Jack has not been able to effectively do that this match. And that's been the difference in the match. Can Huzak answer one more time? Hmm. That is the question here. Rocky Carson with another opportunity to take the match. Good angle. Tough, smart tough, shot tough. by Jack Huzak. Very relaxed. I mean, it's match point. This guy looks like he just went and grabbed a cup of coffee. Yeah, he is just, Morning, Mom. just hanging out. It's a nice, smooth shot. You know, a lot of people in that situation would over swing and try to just crush that ball, but very smooth stroke. Kept his head down, bend his legs, all the fundamentals. Comes back. 
to the service box again. Going back to the lob. Didn't hit any drive serves the whole match. Another bad lob. And Jack telling himself, geez, it's right in the front right corner. You're six feet from the front wall, and he's answering a side front with a side front, and that's a mistake. That ball goes straight down the line. Jack's coming from the back left. It's a winner. It doesn't have to be right on the wall. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be down the line. Rocky with third chance now to win the match for Rocky Carson. Wow. Phenomenal. Three great returns. He's had three U.S. Open match points, and Huzak has pummeled every one of them. Now it's time, I'll tell you what, Cardinal rule, another rule for us, Sean. One or two times, okay, three times you've stuck with a serve and it hasn't worked, you gotta move, move it around, you gotta do something else. Yeah, I mean, it's 10-5. You might as well try to fire one to the forehand or something. Just, I mean, that's the last thing Jack would expect. Just, Just go for it. That's right, don't go back to the same serve. There's a setup. It did look like a skip ball. I know the angle that we're at. I, I, I think he might have cut that. If you look at that on the replay, I'm with you, Mike. I understand why you would say that, but I think he cut that ball in, a, in one of those where it hit the, the front wall, ground, and then the side wall. I'm, I'm, must be getting cataracts. <laughs> there it is. Oh, he got it. And this. Another opportunity for oh, Rocky. He takes a ceiling ball. Another ceiling ball. That's a good ceiling ball. Oh, oh wow. good shot by Huzak there. Carson stepped up anticipating the down the line. And Huzak, right. unbelievable. The ball was about six inches off the back wall and he rifled it cross court into, into Rocky's body. He was moving yeah. forward and he couldn't stop himself and it was too late. At least Huzak switching serves. Over to the right. That's off the back. What a get. What a get. Oh, what a get. man. That was a phenomenal get in the front left corner by, by uh, Rocky Carson. That ball was stapled to the left wall, scampering up the California Panther, looking great. Looking good, looking like the champ. And look at this. Rocky takes a timeout. Welcome back to the finals. Rocky Carson now a sixth opportunity to win the match. Does the hesitating move. And Jack Huzak wins the match. Yeah, I agree. It was Two was very, very, very close. Not even close. Huzak didn't think it was close. Yeah, he just said not, <laughs> not even <laughs> close. <laughs> It, you know what, it kind of hung up a little bit, but I mean, not much. Man, you're right. You know, there's those moments that we'll have to look at that again on the replay, but it's like the ball hits the ground and the racket at the same time. Simultaneously, that's right. Oh, that's, it's, it's been a phenomenal hold off on Jack's part, but he really needs to find something. He needs to find something to score. And to be quite honest, Carson's been returning great all the way through the sequence. Great angle. Left corner. That's off the back. No, touch them all. Jack just missed that shot, and Rocky again hits a great shot. Listen to this crowd. This reminds me of a movie. Yes. I think I've heard of that movie. I think I saw it once or twice. I think they're saying Jack. Yeah. Jack. 
Rocky and Apollo Creed just. <laughs> This crowd is just right into this match. They, they so desperately want a fifth game. Oh, there's the setup. Look at that flat shot. And that's where Carson's improved his game, Sean. I mean, in the past, he used to get setups and he would miss those shots. Now he's so fundamentally sound, he buries those balls on both sides. And that used to be a flaw of his. He was great during the rally, but he never really finished. Now he always ends those rallies. One way or another. And for the most part, today, perfect shots. I can't believe he's sticking with the serve. This has got change up written all over it. Oh, what a yeah, get. This should Dead be duck it. setup, though. And that is it. Two bounces, Rocky Carson. Look at him. Look at him. Rocky Carson wins the U.S. Open for the first time in front of his sponsors, in front of his capacity crowd. And I gotta say, Mike, it couldn't happen to a better guy. It, it really was a popular victory. He played tremendous. He, uh, he, he dominated the action. He dictated the play. He had all the answers. And Jack, disappointingly, just didn't have his best game today. And man, I, I mean, you gotta love racquetball right now. This is just phenomenal. This crowd on their feet, they're playing their theme song for the Rocky movie. Great stuff. Great feeling for Carson. He deserved this match. I mean, he played tremendous. He played great all year. It's really been his season so far. Yeah, you can't ask for much more in a match and in a final of a Grand Slam like this. Number one versus number two. Rocky Carson prevails today. And he's got a ton of people behind him. He's such a good guy. He's got these new sponsors, a great family. He's, he's on top of the world right now. And um, for myself, we all congratulate Rocky Carson. And uh, Mike, Mike Cerici, it's been a pleasure working with you throughout this entire event. So uh, for the Tennis Channel and all you racquetball fans out there, thank you so much for watching. Until next time.